Everyone, this is Ross. In today's video, we're going to be talking about figs, believe it or not. And we're going to be talking specifically about the lignification of these branches. And essentially, the lignification process is going from green growth here that's usually quite pliable um, to something that's hard and sturdy that can support fruit to then something that's brown, fully lignified that will withstand the colds. Um, and potential frosts and also just complete the the cycle of the tree I think it's a really important process that all trees go through you know even some plants go through this process and I think with the fig especially in my area there's just certain scenarios that uh, this process doesn't happen very easily and us as the grower we need to be on top of this we need to be taking care of these trees because as much as you would like to believe these trees take care of themselves and do all of this for themselves, they don't. Um, especially in containers is that we're really in control here, guys. And we really have the power to directly affect the tree's health. Um, for good or for worse. And usually it's for worse. <laughs> so. Um, this is actually, a, 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 I want to just plug rfigs.com, by the way, before I get into the details of lignification, is that this was a topic that was brought up recently on rfigs.com. Um, it's a really fantastic forum, a community of people who love to grow figs. I'm a part of it. I've been a part of it for years, I think since maybe 2014 or 2015. Um, really nice people over there that are knowledgeable i think they have in my opinion some of the most knowledgeable people on growing figs than any other community um yeah that's my opinion but i think it's true uh, they also have a crazy amount of newbies nowadays um, a lot of you guys may actually be members there that are watching right now uh, but the newbies have a nice little part in all of this and that yeah they ask a lot of dumb questions but uh they make people like me that have been growing figs for a reasonable amount of time question our thoughts, our beliefs, and really spark uh, new thoughts. So I think it's important to have a nice balance of both, and certainly our figs has that in spades. So um, just a big shout out to rfigs.com. Shout out to Joe as well from our figs because the man loves to ask questions and question. Um, you know how it is that we're doing things so shout out to joe i don't always agree with him but it's certainly very healthy uh for discussion and for learning um so i want to mention now with the lignification and why this is so important is that if you look here at my in-ground trees some of my in-ground trees they just love to grow and they have such i have such a heavy soil here it holds a lot of water. It's very clay. It's very heavy. There's a lot of nutrients in here. So because of that, these trees just grow and grow and grow and they don't stop and it becomes an issue. It really does because if they just keep growing, they don't lignify in time. The growth on these trees now, if they're not lignified by this point, it's unlikely that they're going to be well lignified come frost. And that's really the big issue is that we want our trees actually to slow down their vigor so that they can fruit. That's a big balance that has to happen between the sap flow, the hormones, the, you know, um, the nitrogen as well that you're giving these plants. There needs to be a nice balance. Otherwise they're going to grow and they're not going to fruit. And then what you can actually happen is that, they can fruit, but then they can continue to grow, which is also not good. And believe it or not, with our container figs, it's a lot easier to control here in that they're gonna put out fruits, they're gonna lignify their branches. And you can see we can pinch it up here at the top. And because they have such heavy fruit set, or hopefully a heavy fruit set, the tree just stops growing. And because it stops growing, you're gonna get these branches to lignify in time. Now, if I have unlignified growth, really vigorous green growth, let's say September 1st, today's October 1st, the chances of this growth uh, lignifying is not high. So it's really important now 
to be paying attention to this in August because we're only three months away from frost. So this is now the time to really be thinking about this, to getting our branches lignified, to stopping this growth. If you haven't already, I would suggest stopping the fertilizer. However, this is a different story when talking about our container figs that are young. We talked about the container figs at a young age and how to form them and how to shape them and what to do and how to feed them. You know, I would recommend just letting them grow. You know, if they're gonna get hit with a frost at some point, you can move them away from that. You can also let them get hit with a frost. You know, this is a lot, I think, more delicate of a process and I, I would personally rather have them grow um, than a tree that's already somewhat mature, a tree that's already fruiting pretty well I would rather protect this from the colds or have this lignified and stop the growth here than stop the growth on something I just want to grow. I mean, that's the main objective with those particular trees, right? It's all about your objectives, all about your goals and what you, you want out of them. Um, but for certain, I think we should be paying attention to this now. And here's a few things we can do uh, because it is so important. Like, I want to mention actually a few things before I get into what we can do in that a lot of our trees in the ground here is that they grow and grow and grow. Like I said, right? They don't lignify in time. The growth doesn't stop. They're so vigorous in the ground, just in general, but also when you put them in the ground with all this excess water, all this heavy nutrients in the soil, they just like to grow. So. What ends up happening is that sometime in November, and actually, believe it or not, it was Thanksgiving night this year, we had a temperature low of 13 degrees. I think actually 13 or 14, and it just wiped out these trees. We didn't even get into the winter time at that point. It wasn't even, I think, technically winter. And our trees had already taken a significant amount of damage because they had just grown and grown and grown, and that was it. They didn't fruit. They didn't slow down their growth. I, as the grower, didn't do what I needed to to get these things to slow down. And it happens almost every year, it seems like. Specific trees just seem to grow a lot quicker, seem to fruit a lot less. So our objectives have to be in the ground here to get them to fruit very heavily. And if they don't fruit very heavily and they don't stop their growth, we need to intervene. And this is what we can do real quick. We can come in here and take off the tips. And what this will essentially do is get ourselves some fruit along these branches, even though the fruit's not gonna ripen in time, right? It requires 90 days. 90 days from today, we're in frost. So what I can do is come in here and take this tip off and stop this thing from growing. Hopefully it puts out fruit and enough fruit so that it just stalls. That's the objective. And that's what we see a lot with the container figs is that they don't have enough nutrients. I can stop the fertilizer, I can slow down the water. I can control what I want in these pots. That's the beauty of it. But in the ground, I can't. And it takes years for the soil to become less fertile. It takes years, and hopefully you've done this already, is that you've planted them higher, right? You've gotten that excess water to divert off and go elsewhere so that these mounds that I'm growing them in hopefully are a bit drier, a bit warmer. When temperatures are actually a bit warmer, they stop to grow. They actually stop growing. Um, when you could get, I think, temperatures in the 80s or the, or the 70s, and these things actually grow quicker than they would if it was in the 90s, which is kind of scary. And what that means is that these trees are gonna just continue to grow. It's just a fact. Uh, I don't know if there's really a whole lot that I can do personally from this point on. We're kind of already in a situation because they didn't fruit very heavily a month or two ago, they're already growing so vigorously that it may just be very difficult at this point to stop and to correct. So there's not a whole lot we can do now except for pinching them, getting them to fruit, getting them to slow down their vigor. Potentially, we could also girdle them. We could also score them, um, slow down the sap flow. You know, even just make uh, small slits with our knife here in the in the green growth. That may actually slow down. It would it would slow down the growth. So that's one option. And that's what I'm going to be doing here. I want to. I'm mentioning this to you guys, not just for your own sake, but 
we're going to be talking about this again and what I'm going to be doing for these trees because um, I think it's important to act now. I think this is a critical moment of the season and this is something that I'm going to be doing. So if I'm doing it, I want to mention it to you guys to show you guys exactly what it is I'm doing. I'm going to come in here for certain and I'm going to pinch a bunch of these trees and hopefully I can get them to fruit. And if I can get them to fruit, that's going to help, certainly help, but then I'm going to come in here on some of these and if I realize that they're just not going to fruit, let's say they're a pretty young tree, um, I'm going to actually slow down the growth myself and I'm going to come in here with a knife and I'm going to slow the sap flow, make some cuts, get that sap flow a lot lower, slow down that vigor. And I'll show you guys a tree. We talked about girdling a couple months ago. We did a video on that and why I think that's going to be important. I think it's going to be absolute, absolutely important every year. But as you can see back over here, this is my one of my Smith trees. Very vigorous limb, very vigorous limb. This limb down here, we girdled. And you can see, look how much it's grown, almost nothing. So it's kind of incredible, actually, what this girdling and lowering the sap flow can do. And that's one way to do it. Another thing, what I'm going to be doing, I'll show you guys in a minute to get over to the, the patio. But I'm going to be spraying something this year. In years past, we've talked a lot about wilt proof, using, those, using that product to help our trees from desiccating. Um, this year, we're going to be doing something different. I am going to spray the wilt proof. But that's later in the fall. For right now, we're going to be using this, a silica supplement called Dynagro Protect. And again, it's a silica supplement and the silica, believe it or not, will help these branches lignify quicker. People have posted about it on our figs. We'll see for ourselves this year. I don't exactly know how well it's going to work, if it's going to work, but certainly I've seen really good side effects from increasing the silica in my plants and especially my figs. I think silica is a really underrated nutrient and it should not be overlooked. It really helps with rust, the natural disease resistance in these trees or plants and um, it should help lignify things. So that's what we're gonna do and that's what we're gonna focus on this year is getting these trees fully lignified from this point. Of course, no fertilizer. We're lowering the water. Um, we also need to keep them in the sunlight because if we don't have that energy from the photosynthesis, the plants are just not going to have enough energy to lignify in time. Um, so that's kind of the goal here, guys. And that's why I wanted to bring this up, talk to you guys about it. There's not a whole lot more to chat about on this, I think. But um, yeah, this is something we're going to be mentioning going forward from this point doing a bit of a series probably on this whole thing you know when it is i spray this i'm just going to follow the directions guys i don't know if this works um i don't know the rates it's on the back dilute it with water and spray it and you got to spray it on the leaves and that's it um you know so again we're going to follow along with this show you guys more on this and talk about what worked and what didn't and uh, of course we'll see you all soon Take care, and we'll see you for tomorrow's video, everybody. See you then.